The far left is destroying itself as the Seattle City Council votes to defund the police. In this video, we're going to take a look at really the latest shocking developments in the city of Seattle. Remember the place of the Chaz Autonomous Zone where its far left city council has not only voted to defund their police department, but who are also declaring war on their fellow Democrats, which is resulting in nothing less than the destruction of the political left itself. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone, patriots across the globe. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you as always. If this is your first time here on this channel, a warm welcome to you. We post two videos a day analyzing current events, analyze some super awesome conserved trends so you can live in the present, a lot of even better things to come. We are a, we're a conservative safe space. Think of it that way. So if you haven't already done so, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a regular part of this channel where each and every day we together celebrate the inevitable collapse of left-wing globalism and the unstoppable rise of a new conservative age. Now, before we dive in here, let's give a huge, a massive shout out to the sponsor of this video, and that's Virtual Shield. So gang, now, if you don't know, if you're using, or if you're not using, I should say, a VPN or virtual private network on your desktop, tablet, or mobile device while browsing the internet, then you really are exposing yourself to a lot of potential danger. But really, protecting yourself online has never been easier. And to make it even better, Virtual Shield is offering our audience, get this, 50% off all VPN plans and all premium add-ons. So don't wait. It is a limited time offer. Click on that link in the description below. Sign up for a free 30-day trial to Virtual Shield VPN today. All right, gang. So let's dive right in here. Over the last several weeks since the death of George Floyd and the mass race riots that swept across our nation's cities, we've been arguing that we are seeing nothing less than a civil war erupt from within the democratic left. This isn't the forces of the left versus the forces of the right. This isn't a fight between liberals versus conservatives. There are no conservatives in our cities. What we're seeing play out in front of us in our cities all across the fruited plains is a war that has broken out between different factions of the political left. The current civil war that we're experiencing is a war of the left versus the left. It's the BLM Antifa left versus the old establishment liberal left. It's the new left versus the old tired left, right? The only people that are getting damaged and destroyed in this whole BLM uprising are fellow leftists, as well as the unfortunate collateral damage of good and decent and law-abiding business owners who were in the way uh, of the crossfire, as it were. But let's unpack that a little bit here, because I think we just saw a huge bombshell blow up in the Civil War in Seattle. And let's take a look at who actually makes up the casualties, because it's certainly not anyone on the political right. As of yesterday, the far-left Seattle City Council voted to basically destroy the Seattle Police Department. They did, in fact, approve legislation that would slash funding for the police department. And get this, just to show you how radical these cultural Marxists are that have taken over the Seattle uh, City Council, the budget committee that voted to enact these massive cuts had only one member vote no. It was nearly unanimous. I think it was a seven to one vote. And that no vote was because this lone councilwoman didn't think the cuts went far enough. She wanted to slash it more. The council voted to cut funding to the Seattle Police Department by 14% for the remainder of 2020. And of course, the, the obvious question is why? What does the Seattle Police Department have anything to do with Minneapolis and what happened to George Floyd? Why? Why are you punishing the Seattle PD for what a few cops did in Minneapolis? Oh, that's right. That's right. Systemic racism. Right, right. Whatever that means, right? Now, it should be noted that this 14% cut is a stark departure from what these cultural Marxists had originally promised their constituents, which was a 50% reduction in funding of the Seattle Police Department. Then, of course, what they would do is they would take that money and reinvest it in communities of color. This is a pattern of the defund of the police movement. It seems to be a money grab in virtually every proposal, virtually every city in the nation, the money that would have funded the police is, is re-allocated uh, 
to fund neighborhoods of color in this ethnocentric, tribalist move among uh, the Democratic Party. And that's why the city council is promising that this really is just the beginning. This 14% cut is but the down payment of many, many more cuts to come. So Seattle police officers, you guys are on notice. Your, your budget has only begun to get cut. On that note, uh, it should be uh, noted that the hapless and feckless mayor of Seattle, Jenny Durkin, you know, the incompetent politician who actually claimed that the Chaz Autonomous Zone was a harmless block party that could even turn into a summer of love. Oh, hippie, hippie, hippie heaven. That, of course, uh, was before a number of people were shot and killed in the failed Marxist experiment. That, yeah, that, that Jenny Durkin, uh, to be fair, she is staunchly opposed to these budget cuts, as well as the chief of police and a number of other prominent Democrats, the old Democrat guard in Seattle. But that meant nothing to the Renew Guard, the rabid Antifa BLM wing of the Democrat Party, which obviously has a monopoly over the Seattle City Council. So now we're seeing the casualties from this civil war that's going on between the old white liberal guard and the new BLM Antifa far left. The first and foremost casualty is the police chief herself, Carmen Best. She was the first black woman to lead the Seattle Police Department. She has announced her resignation in protest to these budget cuts, which she vociferously opposed. In fact, uh, her opposition was so vocal that you had a number of whiny, cowardly, radical activists showing up in her neighborhood in order to harass her at her own home. Now, unfortunately for these agitators, we did a video on this. They were met with a group of residents who were armed to the teeth and formed a blockade to their neighborhood. And they basically told these leftist BLM activists in no uncertain terms to take a hike and get the hell out out of their neighborhood. And the best part, and again, we talked about this in the, the uh, last video we did on it. The best part is that the police chief, Carmen Best, gave her neighbors her full and unwavering support. She has their back for sure. Well, she's now out of a job as a direct fallout from these reckless policies coming from Seattle's cultural Marxist city council. She has indeed uh, announced her retirement, which is more of a resignation. And Black Lives Matter has now successfully removed the first black woman to head the Seattle Police Department. Well done, guys. Well done. Well done. That's, that's social justice for you. Woke, man. But it doesn't stop with the police chief. The feckless mayor herself, Jenny Durkin, may be out of a job. She's the target of a recall effort, which is dubbed Fire the Mayor by organizers. They are all far-left organizers, by the way. This is not a recall initiated by conservatives responding to Durkin's dereliction of law enforcement duties during the whole Chaz fiasco, which again, keep in mind, resulted in the shooting deaths of several people. Now, this is, uh, this is primarily a leftist effort to oust the mayor. And far from being outraged and disgusted over her willful negligence in law enforcement, no, instead, these left-wing lunatics are particularly outraged over the mayor's use of tear gas to disperse the rioters' and protesters. And so as this recall petition goes forward, Durkin is under enormous pressure to accept the budget cuts against the police department from the city council, or else, of course, she'll almost certainly be impeached and go down in history as one of the most disgraced mayors of our lifetimes and well-deserved at that. So we can see here how the woke uprising that our mainstream Marxist media has so enthusiastically cheered on and celebrated from its beginning and continues to encourage and provide justification for. Uh, is, uh, is it not ironic that the only real victims that we're seeing from this mass social disruption are victims from the political left? And so this is why we have to see this fight, I think this massive urban uprising as a civil war that's erupted from within the democratic left itself. But unfortunately, there are certainly an, uh, there's certainly collateral damage, and that damage is the fate, uh, particularly of small business owners in Seattle. At least one downtown business has decided to close its doors permanently on the exact same day that the far left Seattle City Council voted to defund the Seattle Police Department. Andrea and Joe Reitzer announced the closure of their tea shop 
uh, that had been a staple of downtown Seattle for years, and they lay blame directly at the feet of these cultural Marxist lawmakers who've decided to side with and do the bidding of lawbreakers. They said that what the city council did in defunding the police is more detrimental to their business than anything a global pandemic could ever do. And so they're done. They're done. And downtown Seattle has lost yet another business because what they are doing is indeed par for the course for businesses throughout the city. Business owners are leaving Seattle. They want nothing more to do with this left-wing lunatic city, and they are picking up and moving their businesses to far more business-friendly states uh, like Texas. Now, uh, you may have heard too, Seattle has just lost a billion-dollar investment company. That's Smead Capital Management. They've announced that they're moving their headquarters from the insanity of Seattle to far more sane and more affordable Camelback Corridor of Phoenix. The president and CEO of the investment company, Cole Smead, he has indeed confirmed in an interview that the social unrest that's plagued Seattle over the last several weeks has destroyed the downtown business community. In other words, there's just no point to continue to do business in a city uh, whose public officials care nothing, not one whit about law and order and business owners. So what are we seeing here? What's the discernible pattern here? What we're seeing is a clear pattern of Democrat versus Democrat, of leftist versus leftist, or better, the new BLM Antifa left versus the old white liberal establishment left. There's a civil war that's erupted within the party, and as a result, the city that's been dominated by that party faces destruction and debilitation. Uh, nowhere are we seeing so much destruction, debilitation than in Democrat-run cities. The cities of our nation, all of which are monopolized by Democrats, are the ultimate victims, the collateral damage of the Civil War. And I believe that in many respects, it's a war that only has just gotten started. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel, and make sure to check out the latest video on just uploaded on Russia once again interfering in our presidential elections, but this time, it's because they've officially announced the first successful coronavirus vaccine just in time for President Trump's re-election and thwarting Joe Biden's entire, re entire election strategy. I think you're going to really like it, so make sure to click on the link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.